Okay, let's look at this problem. Uh, calculate Q, the heat, when the system does 7.05 times 10 to the fifth kilojoules of work on its surroundings. So if the system is doing the work, then the sign is negative. So this will be a negative sign. And we know the total change. We know delta U is equal to Q plus W. And we know delta U, negative 9.55 times 10 to the third kilojoules is equal to Q, which is my unknown in this case, plus a negative 7.05 times 10 to the fifth kilojoules. So now rearranging this to solve for Q, we get negative 9.55 times 10 to the third kilojoules plus 7.05 times 10 to the fifth kilojoules is equal to 695 times 10 to the third kilojoules, which is equal to 6.95 times 10 to the fifth kilojoules. Now, somehow you had to make these numbers come out to this proper decimal point. The way that I did this was to change this number and say, okay, 705 times 10 to the third. So now when I'm adding 705 and a negative 9.55, you see how I come up with the 695 preserving the place. So you have to really watch that when you're dealing with um, different exponents in there. All right, do you have any questions on that? You will see a question that is as simple as those two the trick on those is you have to recognize the positive and negative and get the signs in place. And, and in those cases, a sign mistake is more than a half point mistake because it is saying that you don't understand the significance of the positive and negative. Okay, now I'm going to go through some stuff really quickly and just to get to the important stuff. So just kind of bear with me as I do some hand-waving algebra and explanations. In chemistry, most of the work we do is pressure volume work with gases. And we've defined work W as minus P, the pressure, times delta V, the change in volume. So if we say that W is negative P delta V and delta U is Q plus W, then delta U is equal to Q plus a negative P delta V. If we hold our system at constant volume because we're in a sealed container, then delta V is zero, so delta U is equal to Q because delta V is zero. So if we are at a constant volume system, we only have to worry about heat. That's what's important to us in chemistry. <coughs> If instead of constant volume, sealing things in a container, we discuss a system at constant pressure, which is more common for us in chemistry because we're at atmospheric pressure, which is the same, we talk about enthalpy and we use the letter uppercase H to describe enthalpy. Enthalpy is equal to the energy U plus the pressure times the volume. So the change in enthalpy, delta H, is delta U plus delta PV. If we're at constant pressure, then it's P delta V. And U is Q plus W, and W is negative P delta V. So at constant pressure, delta H is Q plus negative P delta V plus P delta V. So delta H is equal to Q, and that's all we need to know. If we are at constant volume or if we are at constant pressure, we only have to worry about heat. We don't have to worry about work. And you don't have to worry about how I got there. Just know we're only dealing with heat. Most commonly, we're dealing with heat in reactions, which is enthalpies, because we are working at constant pressure open to the atmosphere. So the enthalpy change, change is always final minus initial. So for us, we say our enthalpy change, delta H is final enthalpy minus initial enthalpy. And for us in chemistry, the final is the products and the initial is the reactants. So these enthalpy changes can be either exothermic, where heat is given off, or endothermic, where heat has to go in. 
In order to deal with these, we are forced into a situation where we must include subscripts indicating physical state in our reactions because as you change physical state, you change energy. That makes sense. Water vapor is more energetic than frozen water. Ice is just sitting there. Water molecules in the gas stage are moving all around and vibrating. So if we look at this, we have water solid, one mole, yields water liquid. This is melting water. And the, stand, or the enthalpy change is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. So we write thermochemical equations where we just write the delta H on the right-hand side. This becomes part of the equation. It's not a product. It's not a reactant. It's just written at the end of the equation, and it's information about that equation. And this tells us that we could write factors now where one mole of water, one mole of water solid would require 6.01 kilojoules. So we can now write another factor using this energy. That's one thing we can do, and we're going to put that aside for later. Another thing that we can do is to take these thermochemical equations, and we can start to manipulate them. If we take water solid, ice, and we melt it, it takes energy to melt it. So I could manipulate this equation by reversing the equation. Instead of taking solid water to liquid water, now I'm taking liquid to solid. And I've changed the sign of the delta H. If it takes 6 kilojoules to melt a mole of ice, then I release 6 kilojoules when I freeze a mole. Does that make sense? We can also take that original equation, and I can multiply it by a coefficient. So instead of having one mole of solid water making one mole of liquid water, I multiplied by two. So I now have two moles and two moles. And when I do that, I multiply the enthalpy value by the same number. So I multiplied my enthalpy by two, and I now have 12.02 kilojoules for two moles of water. The other thing I can do is add equations together. We got used to adding equations when we were adding half reactions, balancing redox equations. And we said we take everything on the left side and everything on the right side. And when we do that, then we add up everything and cancel out whatever's left. So now I'll take these two equations and I'll just add them together. So I have... 2 moles of water solid plus 1 mole of methane gas plus 2 oxygen gas yields 2 water liquid plus carbon dioxide gas plus 2 water liquid and now delta H, I just add these two numbers together and I get negative 878.4 kilojoules. Now if I look at this, I have two moles of solid water on the left. I have two and two. I have four moles of liquid water on the right. I cannot cancel that from both sides because they are not the same thing. So when I rewrite this, I combine what's left. Two moles of water solid, that is not the same as water liquid, so it doesn't cancel. CH4 gas plus 2O2 gas gives me four moles of water liquid plus carbon dioxide gas and my delta H is negative 878.4 kilojoules. So all I've done is add together two thermochemical equations, and when I added the products and the reactants, I also added in the enthalpies. And you make sure when you're adding that you watch the signs, because it's really easy to slip a sign. Okay, now go ahead and you add together the equations on the next page, 
and find the standard enthalpy change.